So yesterday was an excellent day in terms of accomplishments. I, I, I had a hard day, but I got the roof all framed. Uh, I came in last night, I had my supper, and then I had a wee dram of scotch after dinner, and it got me thinking about uh, the history of distillation and, and the history of whiskey, and I thought I'd, I'd, I'd share a wee bit of it. And, and this is going to involve a story about uh, whiskey and a guy falling off a roof, which is, <laughs> which is Kathy's biggest fear when I'm back here working up on the roof. So uh, distillation itself, we can go way back to about 2,000 years ago or so and, and think in the area of Mesopotamia, they gave us distillation and they gave us the wheel. Uh, and at that time it was used for perfumes basically. If we fast forward to about 100 BC, we get into the Greeks and they come up with a way to distill uh, fresh water from seawater. And then we get to, to the birth of, uh, of the whiskey, the water of life itself. And we have the Irish monks arriving in, in Ireland, you see. Now, now, they don't have any wine, and, and they like their wine. So they started making mashes out of any grains they could find. So the first actual reference, wouldn't you know it, comes from Ireland. And we're talking 1362, I believe, in the town of Kilkelly is the first reference to whiskey. Now my story today about whiskey and a man falling off a roof is much more modern, but also takes place in Ireland. So, and, and one of my f favorite Canadian folk singers is a fellow by the name of James Keelahan. And he wrote a song called um, McConville's. So in this song, and I should point out, if you think about taverns, and we've called this place the Cedar Hollow Tavern, it's a meeting place. It's a, you could almost call it a culture. And that culture or tradition is actually brought to the New World by Europeans and immigrated here. But back to poor old Jimmy there. So Jimmy, he, he arrives in, in a place called Porkertown, Ireland. And he's a construction worker and he goes where the work is. But he's looking for a local. So they call taverns that you patronize more than others, they call it your local. And he checks out a number of them until he finally finds McConville's. So McConville's got ales and lagers and porters, but the thing that brings them in, and this is a quote right from James Keelahan's song, is the, Irish, is the uh, whiskey that he brews. But you see, McConville had a rule, and, and his rule was, um, you can drink your fill while at the bar, but the bottle has to stay. So he didn't want to sell it. He didn't want to sell it, retail it. He would sell it if he wanted to come in and patronize. So Jimmy makes McConville's pub his local. And he'd go in most, most nights of the week and he'd play some cards and laugh and joke and do what people do at locals. But one day he's at work and if he takes a bad fall off a roof and, um, and it's tragic, Jimmy, Jimmy succumbs. Now, now this story supposedly is based on, on fact, and well, at least to some extent. Um, but after the funeral of Jimmy, all his friends, they, they congregate at McConville's to have sort of a, a wake for Jimmy. And the bartender at the time, in a line, and there's another line in the song, says, I did a thing I never thought I'd do until it was done. He took a bottle from the shelf and held it up for everyone. And he proposed an auction to raise money for Jimmy's poor family, his wife and kids. So, and he starts the bidding at 50 pounds. Well, the bidding doesn't start till it hits 500 pounds. And you, you can hardly hear the last bid for the roar of old Jimmy's friends. And they, they all step up to the bar and they lay their pay packs down and they walk out of the bar with a bottle of McConville's Best. 
So the bartender, he finishes up, closes up for the night. He's on his way home, and he, ha he happens to pass the graveyard where Jimmy had been buried earlier that day. And, and as he's walking by the graveyard, he sees silhouetted on the, on the skyscraper, or the, the landscape, he sees four figures. And he, in, and he can hear these voices, and, and they're pouring something on the grave. So I'm thinking they bought this bottle at 500 pounds, poured it on old Jimmy's grave as sort of an offering to help him on his way. And uh, yeah, that's a wee bit of story about whiskey and falling off a roof. And with that, I'm going to finish this cup of coffee, and I'm going to leave the Cedar Hollow Tavern, and I'm hoping today, with any luck, I'll be able to get the roof completely sheeted and perhaps even the gable ends done, and uh, then I am seriously on to Palisade Walls.